Hi and welcome to a new episode. Mail has been piling up in the past few weeks, so here is what I've got so far. Let's get started getting through them. We'll start with this uh, DC to DC converter kit from banggood.com. For $6 with free shipping you get this power supply complete with LCD and some uh, acrylic casing. It should be capable of 0 to 16 volts with a peak current of 3 amps. So let's open this. We do get a small note, so input voltage 5 to 23 volts, recommended to use a 20 volts input, so that could be uh, for example any uh, laptop AC adapter. It has an adjustable output voltage from 0 to 16.5 volts, it also saves the last set voltage, a uh, peak current of 3 amps. Recommended for use within 2 amps. Accuracy 1%. Okay, so uh, it says that if you're using it uh, at more than 2 amps, um, it will not uh, be able to dissipate all that heat using this uh, PCB. Uh, claim efficiency of 95%. And some load regulation figures that we don't know if we should trust or not. This is how the uh, small kit looks like. We see this LCD, although uh, very small, it's kind of thick and the with a very thick uh, backlight uh, film. We get a couple of uh, tactile switches. I think uh, you can use these tactile switches for up and down voltage adjustment. And uh, you also get this small acrylic enclosure to go with it. I will assemble it in a separate video and uh, tell you what I think about this uh, power supply. It was certainly cheap enough to stop me from thinking twice about buying it or not. Just think about it. These days you can get a power supply kit with LCD for $6 from China with free shipping. Our next item is this OLED multifunction panel meter. It was under $9 with free shipping from banggood.com and uh, I have seen this uh, before but with LCD displays. This one however caught my eye because of the uh, OLED screen. I don't have one of the LCD ones to do a comparison. This uh, OLED version seems more compact and uh, for some of you that might actually be a downside. The OLED looks to be a 0.96 inch one so you don't get much display area. It came with a sticker right here on the front, one of those quality control stickers. I removed it but it left some residue so I'll have to clean that with some alcohol. Let me actually power this thing up and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to use uh, 12 volts. So that scanning line effect is not actually visible in real life, that's just the uh, camera picking that up. The meter will output in uh, very small letters, uh, voltage, current, uh, power, energy, temperature and uh, what looks like a timer in that upper left corner. I think the temperature is the onboard temperature possibly taken from a sensor internal to the microcontroller and the timer is there to calculate energy. And if we look on the back uh, this thing, uh, although not readable on camera, uses an STM8 uh, microcontroller. Uh, what else? It looks like we have an op amp in here, a local uh, voltage regulator. A thermistor, so uh, it's it looks like it's not measuring uh, any internal sensor. It does have a thermistor on board right there in the in the upper right corner. And we see the time has already recorded one minute since this uh, meter has been uh, turned on. 
I was planning on using this meter for a power supply project, but now I realize this display, although nice with good contrast and lots of information, it's too small. So I will probably order the LCD version as well and pick the one that I like most. However, this OLED version does have the advantage of having separate power and sense line for voltage, so it can actually measure down to zero volts. While the LCD version that I see on Banggood and eBay does not have separate power and sense line. It is basically powered from the uh, sense lines and that's not a good idea for my power supply project where I need to measure down to zero volts. Next up I have this uh, small module which is a DC motor PWM speed controller. It should be capable of continuous 3 amps with an input voltage of uh, 6 to 28 volts DC. We see it has this uh, very small heatsink for cooling. Um, it's, it's really small heatsink, I'm not sure if this will make a, a real difference or not. Um, I'm also not sure if they're using some dedicated PWM controller IC or um, maybe something like a 555 timer with some uh, MOSFET on the output. But if we take a closer look, yeah, we see an NE555 I see in here. This one could be either a voltage regulator or a transistor. Let me just remove that heatsink and see those two devices under the heatsink. So it looks like this one here might be a 3.3 volts regulator. And uh, right here we might have a transistor driving this uh, MOSFET which will actually control the uh, output to the motor. So this is a cheap building block for a project where you might need a DC motor speed control and a link for this will be in the description below. Our next product is the BQ24650 MPPT module. I must say this was by far the hardest thing to get from eBay so far. I first ordered this module somewhere in uh, September last year. I waited till November but the package never showed up. So I got a refund from the seller, I then ordered it again from another seller and waited until uh, January 2016 but once again the package didn't show up so I once again got a refund. This is the third time I ordered it and it looks like I finally got the module. It's a different color. This one is green and the uh, product page was showing a blue PCB but I'm not going to complain about that. I have some uh, small solar panels and uh, wanted to do some experiments to see how much energy I could uh, store in some batteries. This whole idea started back when I did my automatic plant watering system because that was battery uh, based and it needed recharging. So the BQ24650 from Texas Instruments is uh, this little guy right here in QFN package. It's a um, switch mode battery charge controller that can handle lithium as well as lead acid chemistries. So that was a really big uh, plus for me, the ability to switch between the two different chemistries. It has a bunch of features and it does MPPT, so if you're interested in something like this, a uh, link will be in the description below. I was also planning on making some battery packs from a bunch of salvage 18650 cells and I, did it, I needed some way of protecting these packs. Luckily, there are readily available protection modules like this one. And this particular model is suited for uh, 3S packs. It can handle 3 amps and it should protect against overcharge and over discharge with a very low um, standby current. I also got a second model and uh, this one can do 3 and 4 S packs depending on how you wire it and uh, up to 2 amps. My main curiosity about these uh, protection modules is whether or not they can act as basic uh, charging circuitry for the batteries. They advertise overcharge protection, so that means they will cut off if the voltage at the uh, battery pack terminals exceeds a certain safety value. And that's similar to how charging of uh, lithium cells should be done. Grossly simplified, of course. So let me know what you think in the uh, comment section. 
Next, we have this uh, mini DC to DC converter modules. And you've seen this uh, model before in a previous in the mail episode. I have uh, already used that one. So I uh, ordered a new one just to keep it as a spare for when I need uh, another one. I'm not going to go through its uh, specs again, except that it's very small and be, be aware this will not be capable of outputting continuous uh, uh, 3 amps as advertised. Next I have an item that will probably come very handy one day. I know for sure there were days where this would have been handy in the past. It's an RS-232 to Bluetooth adapter and uh, I remember some months ago when I was trying to repair some industrial modules they had uh, RS-232 debug ports and I had to go search through my bin of cables and find the suitable uh, RS-232 cable and then find a good USB adapter and uh, all this to get a reliable link I had to, to find a really good uh, USB to serial adapter and I remember it was uh, frustrating because I was tied to the equipment with that cable. If I would have had this module, I could have uh, plugged it in and just connected to it uh, wirelessly through virtual serial port protocol. For example, here is a, a board I uh, designed a while ago and it has an RS-232 port and this module um, could plug in in there. Uh, if I would just uh, remove these uh, uh, retaining uh, screws right here. I'm not sure if uh, I have the uh, wrong connector on my board or if this thing shouldn't have the, the screws. I'm not sure uh, which one uh, should have the retaining screws. Uh, but uh, if these things uh, are removed, you can just plug it in here then you will only need to supply power and you've got yourself a wireless uh, serial port. This module also needs 5 volts power and uh, that's the downside but you have various options for supplying that either directly from the host or um, uh, through this uh, uh, socket with a battery or through this uh, USB port it also has this uh, switch for selecting between uh, master and slave operation for the Bluetooth module, which appears to be an HC05. In this mailbag I also got another HC05 Bluetooth module that I couldn't wait uh, showing it to you. It, uh, I, I needed the module on this Darklog PCB because I have been uh, working on this project lately, developing some code and validating the hardware. The uh, HC05 module is well known low cost, it can do both master and slave, even though I'm only using it as a slave in this project. The way I see things, instead of adding isolated uh, USB connection to your project, why not use Bluetooth? You get the isolation and the advantage of a wireless connection. Not to mention your connection is somewhat universal, you can connect to a PC or a phone or tablet as well. These uh, AC05 modules are very cheap at uh, under $3 with free shipping. And you'll find a link in the description below. Next up I have another interesting module. It's an mp3 uh, player module with a couple of uh, interesting features. So this thing will uh, read mp3 files from micro SD cards or from USB flash drives inserted into uh, this port. It has uh, four switches on board and you can use those to skip forward backward through your files uh, change the output volume, um, play pause or select between micro SD or um, a flash drive. So basically all you need to do is supply this thing with 5 volts and you have an mp3 player right there. I think this could be useful in one of those projects where you need to output sound. It could be something simple like a talking uh, robot or one of those uh, fail buttons that Dave has in his lab. So. Uh, you can also build uh, something more advanced, it's up to you. This module was very cheap at $1.80 free shipping. I mean, you couldn't get the connectors alone for this price in Europe and you are getting a completely assembled module with free shipping from China. Once again, unbelievable. Our next item is called DigiSpark 
and it's an 80 tiny 85 USB development board. This was a Kickstarter back in 2015 and you can still buy this from the um, original designer. However, I got mine from eBay. It's probably uh, to say so a knockoff, but I paid only $1.50 with free shipping. The design is released under a Creative Commons license, so that means you can even use it commercially as long as you keep the license. So I guess legally it's okay for the Chinese factories to manufacture these things and sell them cheap. I mean, you couldn't get the microcontroller alone for $1.50 free shipping, in, in Europe at least. So the board is basically an 80 tiny 85 with uh, USB support implemented in software. It's Arduino compatible, so that means really easy to program and uh, debug this thing. You get all six pins broken out to this uh, edge header, which makes it convenient. So this could be suitable for anything you need to control where a small, small number of uh, IOs will uh, suffice. I just think it's handy to keep one around and I'm sure it will be uh, useful in in some way uh, in some project. Our next item is easily recognizable. You've probably seen this on eBay before. It's uh, one of these RFID reader writer device for 125 kilohertz tags. So I got this uh, this package that also comes with some uh, some cards and keychain tags, and this is useful if you. Uh, want to copy your existing tags like I'm going to do. The price was about $12 for this pack and it's okay considering uh, I would pay about $10 locally uh, to have just one uh, tag copied. First I was thinking of getting myself uh, one of those uh, modules, a reader writer module and using an Arduino to do the copy but just the module itself was six seven dollars so after adding in some empty tags i figured it was the same cost as this whole package so i went for the whole deal no stress uh, i think this works uh, with a couple of triple uh, a batteries and uh, yeah as as i mentioned really really easy easy to use no hassle you can read and then write a new tag and uh, judging by this uh, speaker grill right here it will beep when uh, when operation is complete our next item is this um, compact PIR sensor module I didn't know they sell modules this compact so I got one just to see how it looks and works and uh, who knows it might get handy someday it has this uh, very small lens over the uh, PIR sensor as you would expect in these uh, detectors. This uh, little device right here, uh, I think is the onboard 3.3 volts regulator that powers the uh, main motion detection IC. And you only get a 3.3 volts output trigger when motion is detected. So you would have to detect that trigger in your circuit and possibly amplify it to control a relay, for example. I believe you can also play with the uh, delay uh, by changing some resistor uh, or capacitor combo on this PCB. But for now this will go into a bin with uh, modules until it will be needed. This is a 10 pieces pack of the NCP1203 PWM controller from OnSemi. According to its datasheet this is a um, PWM current mode controller for offline power supplies. A while back I mentioned I was uh, planning on building my own small flyback converter to convert mains to something like a 5V DC through uh, a small compact but reliable module. Then I came across this device and saw it was uh, quite cheap and could do the job. Considering how they ship these in this uh, plastic bag, you wouldn't uh, use something like this and expect it to be very reliable or I don't know, even genuine. You might even risk uh, getting something from the uh, gray market, some fake ICs. But for hobby use or experiments, that's fine. I don't want to pay for expensive packaging. 
The uh, data sheet gives you an example application schematic and it's uh, quite simple. You basically need a bridge rectifier, a transformer, a MOSFET, some passives and an opto isolator and you got yourself a uh, flyback converter. This pack was under $3 with free shipping. Links will be in the description below. Our last item in this video is this... Uh, uh, it's the largest of them all. It's uh, an energy meter. This is also an item that uh, has been ordered once, never arrived and got refunded. Ordered it second time and this time I received it. I often needed a way of telling how much uh, power some equipment was um, uh, pulling from the um, grid, either uh, active or standby. I'm not sure this will be very accurate for low power, but it does show voltage, current, power, energy, and those might be interesting figures when uh, I review some piece of uh, equipment. I might even uh, take it uh, apart uh, just to take a look inside. There probably won't be much to see. Uh, metering I see uh, with its numbers probably rubbed off or probably just a black uh, blob uh, on a cheap PCB with a current shunt. But we'll see about that in a different video. This thing was uh, $13 with free shipping from eBay and there will be a link in the product description below. As usual, thank you for watching this uh, video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button below and let me know what you think in the comment section below. I will see you next time.